Well, we welcome you this day to the online worship for Crossville First United Methodist Church. Today is Heritage Sunday or Aldersgate Sunday. And uh, we had the pleasure this week of celebrating Ascension Day this past Thursday, a time when we celebrate Jesus' Ascension back to uh, His Father in heaven. We uh, thank you once again for being here and we just pray that uh, God will touch your life as we talk more about the uh, beginnings of uh, Methodism and uh, John Wesley's heartwarming experience on Aldersgate Day. And as we have done every single week, we invite you to observe the candle that will be lit on the table beside me, representative of God's presence among the people every single moment.
fire before us you're the brightest you will lead us through the storms fire before us you're the brightest you will lead us through the storms fire before us you're the brightest you will lead us through the storms my lighthouse my lighthouse shining in the darkness i will follow you oh my lighthouse my lighthouse i will trust the promise Good morning. What a wonderful time of worship we're having, and I just pray that you are feeling and experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit and the very, very, very real love of Christ for you. Uh, we want to continue to pray for each other during this time of prayer and just ask that God will touch us and, and uh, show us uh, the things that, that we can do. I just uh, recently heard a quote from somebody, and uh, it just kind of touched my heart. It says, as long as we have breath, we have purpose. Uh, and so I pray that that will just bless you in some way that uh, even in the midst of all that's going on, we have a purpose. The church has a purpose. You are the church. I am the church. We are the church together. And so uh, because of that, that breath of life, we have a purpose, uh, even in the midst of uh, the social distancing and everything like that. So uh, we want to just uh, take a moment just to pray for each other, uh, just uh, to remind you to uh, and encourage you to, to just uh, just pray and, and just let the Lord just maybe just take a moment of silence. Uh, I don't know if you can really do that right now, but maybe after this time or maybe at some point during the week, uh, you can just ask just to be in, in silence. And, and as you go into that, just ask God to, to give you names to pray for. You don't even have to know what's going on or the reason to pray, but just start praying for that person or that situation, whatever God shows you. Uh, so I want to encourage you to do that, uh, and I pray that you know that uh, Pastor Stephen and I love you very much, and uh, we're, we're uh, looking forward to, to that time, whenever it might be, to be together, but uh, uh, we know that we are together in Christ, and we praise God for that. So let's, uh, let's remember these uh, re requests. Uh, we've had a few. I uh, want to continue to keep uh, um, Rick and Barbara Pritchard in our prayers. Um, one of the last reports I saw, he was actually responding a little bit. Uh, a little bit more, and Robert has been able to visit, and his daughter, their daughter came in, and so I've uh, uh, been able to visit with him. So we thank God for that. Uh, also, we want to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, keep Howard Sr. in our prayers. Uh, they uh, haven't put a stand in, and so uh, we, we ask, ask you to pray for him. And also uh, uh, the Bond family. Uh, Michael Bond is uh, in the hospital, and Glenda's with him, and, and also Randy's uh, brother, Steve, in South Carolina. South Carolina um, has brain cancer um, and so and they think he might have had a stroke and so we just want to keep the Bond family in our prayers and if they're listening to this right now or at any of course whenever they listen to it I just want you to know we, we love you all and uh, you you are in our prayers um, and I, I've often said this especially lately you know I used to say that's the least we can do but uh, the how powerful prayer is that's the best we can do that's the most we can do uh, but uh, was, please, Bond family and Pritchard family and, and uh, our Mercers uh, and anyone else who's hurting during this time know that, that, that you are in our prayers. So let's uh, just have a word of prayer together. Gracious God, we thank you so much for this worship, for the songs that we've sung together, Lord, for uh, the time that uh, even, even through, the, through this technology, Lord, how we can be together in worship and praising you. Lord, we just pray right now for your Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us, fall afresh on our homes or wherever we might be right now, Lord, as we worship you and knowing that uh, as awesome as the church building is, Lord, that, that we are the church right now in our homes, you know, wherever we might be uh, in this moment. And so thank you for that. And, and we do look forward to the day, Lord, uh, as we're able to, to come back together uh, and, and physically to, uh, to, to be the church. And, and so this... Uh, Help us to remember, Lord, that as long as we have that breath, we have purpose here on this earth. Uh, we thank you for that. We know that uh, we thank you for that power that we have in the name of Jesus. 
So maybe there's someone right now, Lord, that, that's hearing this, and we just ask that uh, they might receive just that, that double portion uh, of your grace, of your power, of your spirit right now, Lord. We pray for that, that you just just pour it out like uh, like we would if we had a cup full of water, Lord, uh, and just throwing it to the ground. We just pray that you just uh, dump out uh, your Holy Spirit on us, and we thank you. Thank you, thank you for that great gift. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Uh, in this moment, we thank you that uh, that you heard those that we spoke out loud and, and the many, 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 Lord, that we have on our hearts and our minds. We pray that you give us peace, knowing, Lord, that you are already intimately involved in the situations that we, we have named out loud and named in our hearts. We thank you, Lord, that not only do you hear our prayers, but you are moving and working. We pray, Lord, that, uh, that we uh, will have the strength and the courage to follow you, and, and Lord, that, uh, that even... Even if there's something we don't like or we don't understand, Lord, that you will just uh, give us the comfort and the, the trust in you to follow. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. And we ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus. And But we also pray together uh, as we remember and as we say and as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for your prayers. When the music fades, and all is stripped away, and I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That'll bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required you search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made all about you, all about you, Jesus. King of endless words, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things you're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you All about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it When it's all about you All about you
Sally, what are you doing? Well, uh, have you been in my shoe closet? Look, uh, my shoes are totally disorganized. You know how I'm about my shoes. So, um, what, what do you mean, what am I doing? I'm getting ready to film a children's moment, see? I was going to talk about shoes. Because I have tons of shoes. Shoes for everything. I have dress shoes for dress things. <gasps> yeah, they're nice, aren't they? I know, I like those. And then I have tennis shoes. I have all sorts of shoes. I even have flip-flops, which I'd count as shoes. You know, and the reason I was looking for all my shoes is because I thought of a cool children's message about shoes. Because you know, as Christians, we are taught, Sally, how to walk. Did you know that? We're supposed to walk with the Spirit of Christ. We're supposed to walk as Jesus did. Yeah. So what does that mean? Does that mean I need a special pair of shoes? Does that mean... It means that when we walk like Christ walks, that means that we walk the same way He did. We forgive others. Yes, we love everybody else. We are patient. We're kind. We pray for those. We visit those who are sick. We go see everybody. Yes, even, even the mean cat that lives next door. Yes, we go visit everybody, Sally. I know you don't like her, but we got to visit everybody because that's what it means to walk as Christ did. Is that we walk and we show that we care and we love. Even our enemies. Yeah, but we do. And so I was trying to find my best pair of shoes, but they seem to be missing. Sally, have you been wearing my shoes again? Oh, I tell you what. Kids, make sure that when we're walking, that we always have our best foot forward. And that we're walking as Christ wants us to walk. As always, we miss you. We hope that you're doing well. We hope that you're staying healthy. Reading your Bible and praying. Oh, practicing. That's like one of the lessons we had. And we hope that you're doing well. And know that me and Sally miss you very much. Don't we? And we will see you soon. Bye. Letting go of every single dream. I lay each one down at your feet. Every moment of my wandering never changes what you see. I tried to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, king of the fight, no matter what I face, you're by my side. When you Truth is, you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So let all things be my life and breath. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, I could walk through when you don't give the answers as I cry out to you. I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. Are my strength and comfort, you are my steady hand, you are my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Your ways are always higher, your plans are always good. I could walk through when you don't give the
answers as I cry out to you. I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. 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 The epistle lesson today is from 2 Peter 1, verses 3 through 11. Hear these words. Confirming one's calling and election. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them, you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election, for if you do these things, you will never stumble, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As I alluded to earlier, I wanted you to be reminded that today is the anniversary of uh, John Wesley's heartwarming experience at Aldersgate Street in London. This event took place on May the 24th, 1738. It has been stated uh, throughout history that up until this heartwarming experience, John Wesley trusted in his own merit and his own efforts towards works righteousness being the thing that gained him favor with God. If you read his sermons and his um, journals very closely, you will know the difference in ideology and theology post May the 24th, 1738, compared to those that were written uh, prior to that date. Today we will talk about the importance of John Wesley's Aldersgate experience, not only for the Wesleyan movement in, in America, but how it affected Christianity here in the United States of America and the world beyond. One of the things that uh, characterizes John Wesley's experience at Aldersgate is that he had learned to trust in God, and God alone, not in other people, not in circumstances, and not within himself, but holy trust in God and God alone. This is a good lesson for every one of us this day as we ponder our spiritual journey with Christ. And I hope that all of us, not only today, but throughout the days ahead, will find the assurance and faith and trust in God and God alone as we journey forth in our relationship with Christ. You may know that uh, John and his, Char and his brother Charles embarked to the New World, what we know as the original colonies, in October, about October the 14th, 1735. They landed in Georgia at the invitation of General James Oglethorpe, who invited John Wesley to be chaplain there. And also his brother Charles was appointed by General Oglethorpe to be his secretary, a position that he was ill-equipped 
to fulfill. And yet because of the invitation, he and John embarked on a journey to the New World, to Savannah, Georgia. And there they attempted to be a witness and to convert not only the Native Americans who resided there, but also those early colonists who had found their way to Georgia prior to their arrival. We know that uh, the journey for Charles did not take very long because both Charles and John found themselves very discouraged by their inability to convert those early colonists and the Native Americans to Christianity, specifically the Anglican uh, faith. And so throughout their time there, they attempted many times to convert people without very much success. And this because of their uh, belief that they had to earn their way to God and to do good works to be favored by God, they became very dejected and questioned their own faith journey of whether they were even Christians at all. In fact, as John uh, left and went back to England, he questioned his call from God. And there were some thoughts in his mind whether he should remain an Anglican priest or not. Charles had already left and came back to England in July of 1736, just a few months after they arrived there. But John, being the more stubborn of the two, waited until February of 1738 to make his way back to their homeland. Throughout their journey, they had encountered uh, church members from a Moravian church who in the midst of difficult trials and even storms at sea, seem to be celebrating with rejoicing even in the midst of a storm that threatened their very existence. Both John and Charles desired this joy in their own heart, and they wondered why if they had been ministering and they had been trying to possess personal holiness, why they didn't feel ecstatic or joyful in their own relationship with God. It is through their encounter with the Moravians and their questioning of their religious practices that John and Charles Wesley sought a relationship to God that was filled with joy and anticipation and hope. This seeking on their behalf led them to both have experiences with God and experience with the Holy Spirit, an experience that they characterize as one of trust and obedience and faith in God instead of trusting in their own righteousness or the things that they had done to gain favor with God. This not only transformed the Wesleyan movement and led to the formation of the Methodist Church in America in 1784, but it would be a movement that would influence Christianity all throughout the newly formed country of the United States of America, an influence that continues up until the present day and hopefully in the days to come. John Wesley had an, had an encounter with a uh, pastor in the Moravian denomination named Peter Boiler. And as he began to seek out advice from um, Boiler, Boiler uh, gave his piece of advice to Wesley that even though he may not feel faith in his heart right now, that he were to continue to preach faith until he had it. And then because he had it, he would preach faith. That was one of the turning points 
of John Wesley's experience with God, one that he would be on a quest for immediately as he returned to his homeland. Even though John Wesley's Aldergate experience is one that is most popular, most people do not even know that his brother Charles had a similar experience three days prior to his. On May 21st, 1738, actually on Pentecost Sunday of that year, Charles Wesley had his own experience with God where he trusted in God more than he did in his own abilities. It was a time of great peril for Charles himself and challenge because he was faced with a pretty serious illness and was staying at the home of a friend. Throughout this time of illness, Charles Wesley sought out advice from friends. He prayed and he read the Holy Scriptures, asking God to confirm within him the assurance that if he were to pass away, that he would be able to spend everlasting life with God in the place called heaven. As he talked with the friends around him on his sick bed, Charles Wesley and his friends prayed for God to pour out the Holy Spirit upon him. And finally on this Pentecost Sunday of May 21st, 1738, Charles Wesley had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. It is during this time of illness that Charles Wesley focused on his spiritual well-being. Even though we sometimes read the reports of these incidents of Charles and John receiving an encounter with the Holy Spirit as almost an, a spontaneous event, I wanted you to be sure this day that they prepared themselves in a great deal to experience an encounter with the Holy Spirit. They spent many hours in prayer and Bible study and consulting with spiritual friends. And all of these means of grace prepared their heart to receive this experience that they both had in May of 1738. Charles wrote in his journal that that day on Pentecost Sunday, he felt a strange palpitation of heart after which he recorded in his journal that, I believe, I believe. And then he concludes the experience by saying, I now found myself at peace with God and rejoiced in hope of loving Christ. That day, he was visited by his brother John and Charles informed John of his experience that he had with the Holy Spirit. John so desired this for his life as, as he faced uncertainty and the questioning of his own faith and calling by God. So the two of them and their friends around them prayed for John to have a similar experience as Charles did on that Pentecost, Pentecost Sunday, May 21st, 1738. The next day, John visited again. They prayed and read scripture that he would have a, an experience just like Charles. And Charles recorded on that day, two days prior to the Aldersgate experience, he said, I almost believe that the Holy Ghost was coming upon him, meaning coming upon John. And even though there is nothing recorded that anything extraordinary happened to John on May the 22nd, 1738. It was only a couple of days till he had this transforming experience with God while reading the scriptures and praying diligently and speaking to his spiritual mentors and those who were mature of the faith. Initially, John records that he went very unwillingly 
or in a reluctant way to a society meeting on Aldersgate Street in London. Wesley records that while he was hearing someone read Martin Luther's preface to the book of Romans, that, quote, about a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt that I did trust Christ and Christ alone for salvation. And an assurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death, end quote. I want you to uh, recognize that this was not something that just happened to John Wesley by accident, but it was something that he prepared his heart for God to move and to reveal to him what he needed to do to grow in his journey of faith. The scriptures that John Wesley was reading during that three-day period to experience an outpouring of Holy, the Holy Spirit or that he could fully trust in God and God alone as the source of his salvation, were the following. Psalm 130, Acts 2, 1 through 21, Romans 5, 1 through 11, Matthew 9, 27 through 30, and Mark 12, 28 through 34, as well as the passage that we have just heard Rachel read to us from 2 Peter chapter 1. It is through this diligence and scripture reading and prayer and consultation with spiritual friends all around him that prepared Wesley's heart to receive an outpouring of God's Holy Spirit or that he could be taught that he was going about his Christian journey in the wrong fashion and that he needed to place his full trust in God and God alone, rather than in circumstances or the works that he did or his own merit or the merits of those around him, that he needed to put his full trust in God and God alone. That's a great word for us this day. We live in a world uh, somewhat like the Wesley philosophy prior to Aldersgate, we feel that we can earn our way to God by the good deeds that we do or the things that we have contributed to society. But when it comes down to where the rubber meets the road, our salvation is found in the gift of God through Jesus Christ and the faith and trust that we have in Christ. And I invite you this day to embark on that journey with me as we learn to fully trust in God as the source of our salvation. I wanted to reread for you verse 3 of 2 Peter 1, for I think it's a beautiful thing about trust. The writer says, His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. I like that. We're reminded from the writer of 2 Peter that it is given to us as a gift from God. It is nothing that we have earned or nothing that we have prevented by our, our unfaithfulness that have gained us this privilege but it is through the divine power and gift of God that we have been given everything that is needed for our lives and for godliness as we grow in the likeness of Christ. What a wonderful verse that is for our own uh, Christian journey, that God has given us everything that we need for life and godliness through the divine power. 
We need to be reminded of that in times when we are struggling, in times when we question our own faith and doubt the existence of the goodness of God, that through God's divine power, we have been given everything that we need in life and the tools that are necessary to be godly as Jesus is godly. We're told by the writer of 2 Peter that the reason that we are given this divine power needed for life and godliness is that we would be able to escape the world's corruption and participate in the divine nature of God. We are living in a day and age when we desperately need to escape the corruption of the world and participate in the divine nature that God only can grant us. This indeed takes a great amount of trust and faith in God. Hopefully that you and I will continue these days on a quest whereby we can trust and fully place our faith in God and God alone through Jesus Christ our Lord. The writer goes on to say, because we have given, been given the opportunity to escape the corruption of the world and to, to participate in the divine nature, for these, these reasons, we must make every effort to support the following things. To support our faith with goodness. To support our goodness with knowledge. To support our knowledge with with self-control, support our self-control with endurance, support our endurance by godliness, support our godliness by mutual affection, and support our mutual affection with divine love. The writer of 2 Peter continues, for if all of these things, faith, goodness, knowledge, self-control, endurance, godliness, mutual affection, and love are ours, and they continue to increase in us. That this will keep us from being ineffective in our faith journey and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I long for a faith that is effective and fruitful. I long to participate in those things of the kingdom of God. I long for the church and for all of the persons who have allegiance of faith and, and relationship with Jesus to grow in their faith and to be a solid witness for Christ in the world. The writer of Second Peter says, but if you lack these things, you become short-sighted and blind and you forget that your past sins are forgiven. Perhaps we can be on a journey toward God where that we will be effective and fruitful in our relationship with Christ and avoid being short-sighted, blind, and forgetting that our past sins are forgiven. Many people along life's journey are bound and become burdened because they are reminded by the enemy time and time again of their checkered past. We all can, can embrace this day that our sins are forgiven by God if we would only ask for it, and that Jesus Christ is in the process of wiping the slate clean and giving us a fresh opportunity to begin again each and every day of our lives. We praise God and thank God for that opportunity. The writer of 2 Peter ends with these words. Therefore, be more eager to confirm your call and election. These are days in which we should be even more eager to confirm God's call and God's election of our lives not in the sense of exclusiveness, but to be reminded that God not only calls us to a specific purpose, 
but God calls us to be an effective witness in the world of God's love and grace and mercy. And we should always be reminded of that every single morning when we are awakened from our night's slumber. I invite you to hear these beautiful final words of proclamation from the writer of 2 Peter in this particular chapter. If you do this, meaning that if you participate in these things that God has given you by avoiding the uh, world's corruption and participating in the divine nature of God, you will never stumble, says the writer of 2 Peter. If you are like I am, there are many occasions on every single day where I stumble and fall and I don't act as uh, God's uh, intention for my life. I act anything but Christ-like or godly. But this is a constant reminder to me and to you that if we continue to do these things, if we allow God to help us to avoid the corruption of the world and we participate in God's divine nature, that we will never stumble in our walk with Christ. And as a result of walking faithfully with Christ, the writer of 2 Peter says that we will gain entry into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And these things will be richly provided for us. Many of us are looking forward to the time when uh, we end the our time here in the earthly kingdom and we go to the heavenly kingdom prepared for us richly by God through Jesus Christ. But let us all be reminded this morning that everlasting life uh, doesn't only happen when we pass from the church militant to the church triumphant. It is one that you and I begin while we're still here on the earth learning to trust in Jesus Christ and Christ alone for the source of our salvation and life experiences. I invite you this day to, to participate in the everlasting life that is offered to you through the gift of God and Jesus Christ. As we celebrate this day, the event that changed not only the Wesleyan movement, the United Methodist Church, and many Protestant denominations all across the globe. We give thanks to God for giving direction, spiritual direction to the Wesley brothers, inspiring Charles to write some six to 8,000 hymns, and John to be a great effective preacher of the gospel of Jesus. To be reminded that we gain favor with God, not through our merit or through our acts of obedience, but we gain God's favor through our accepting them as a gift from God through Jesus Christ. During this time, we are challenged. We are challenged in our faith journey. We are challenged in our priorities, our morals, and our ethics. But I invite you with me to remember this passage from 2 Peter 1, reminding us, as it did the Wesley brothers some 200 plus years ago, that our faith and trust should rely solely upon God and God alone as the source of our salvation. That we have been given everything that we need for life. And that we have been given everything that we need to be godly as Jesus is godly. And I invite you this morning on a quest, a quest that we all must journey together, a quest that reaches for the godliness found in Jesus Christ and in Him alone. During these challenging days, 
It would be easy for us to rely upon the skills of ourselves and others, and even in circumstances or things, material things. But we are reminded this day by the experiences that the Wesley brothers had with the Holy Spirit in 1738. And through this passage in 2 Peter, that if we follow these things, avoiding the corruption of the world and participating in the divine nature of God, that we will never slumber and we will experience the everlasting life brought to us by God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. We're praying for you and we pray God's richest blessings upon you and we want you to know that we love you. Goodbye. Amen. What a wonderful time of worship we've had. I want to just again thank everyone who's taken part in to help and put all this together. And, uh, you know, when we started this, it, we thought, of course, you know, it's going to be just a week or two, but uh, it's turned into a long process. And so we, we just want to take time to thank everyone. Uh, we don't want to mention any names, but uh, you know who you are. And, and uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to to put this together and, and to allow us this chance to worship. Uh, thank uh, everyone for today who participated in worship and for all the songs and, and for the reading of the scripture and especially the, the wonderful sermon we've been able to, to be blessed by. And now let us pray that that sermon, that that word that we heard from God will just be uh, come straight into our hearts and let it bear great fruit for the kingdom. May you right now, right now, be filled with the Holy Spirit to go to live out this word that we've heard today, to go to be the church no matter where we're at. Let this be our prayer today, tomorrow, until that blessed day we get to be together again. In the name of Jesus Christ, we all pray. Amen.